Okay, we're September 5th, 9 a.m. finance meeting. And uh, please call the roll. Alt? Here. Bowers? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Signot? Yes. Young? Yes. Johnson? McTaggart? Yes. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Yes, moved. Young? Seconded by Alt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll go to the liability general insurance update. Myron. Uh, we haven't had any new claims, a couple new vehicles in and out, a um, couple different apartments, but other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. Any questions? Anything? Don't think so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Susie, group insurance? Yes. Okay, so we are currently. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped public comments. Oh, I can wait. Just go, and then we'll get down <laughs> here. We'll... Okay. That's uh, my fault. Right now, we're currently working on the renewal process. Um, it started out at 17% for Health Alliance. I've so far worked it down to 12%, and I'm still working my magic, going the right direction down. So um, I do have a meeting with Jill and Amanda on the 18th, and I'm hoping to have everything back from Health Alliance by then with their additional relief, as well as other information we have from other carriers. And then we can kind of dig in and go from there, but we are going down in the right direction. It started high. We've gotten down to 12, and I'm looking to get down to at least 4 to 5% to make it a doable renewal. Okay. Okay, that's what I have. Any questions? Don't think so. No? Okay. All right. Take care, guys. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll go back up to public, public comments. Any public comments? Does it look like we skipped anything worthy there? Okay. We'll go to department head reports. We'll talk about the budget in a second, but Eric, you got anything other than that? Um, it's about $54,000 that we're coming in. Um, just going through some paperwork, through, through a contract, about 50 pages of light reading, so it's taking a little bit more to do. Um, that's about all I've got. Other than Did you say it was approved? Sorry, I approved. Okay, good. Um, it was originally 133, it's gone up to 154. I don't have any reason as to why, but I'm not going to complain. State of Illinois is in such good financial shape they decided to give you more money. It sounds good. Well, good. Anything with health? I'm just here taking notes. Okay. Just saying, are you the Okay, very good. Sheriff, you have? I have a couple claims. So you brought bad news. <laughs> not, that's not too much there, but. Um, <laughs> I have a uh, correctional officer that is going for other employment leaving, so I'm going to be in the process of uh, looking at some applications for correctional officer. Um, and other than that, I have been in talks with a community in Iroquois County over contracting police uh, protection, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. and. We're in the initial stages of it. Right now, it's kind of a manpower uh, problem with me, but uh, we're trying to work through that, and uh, I'll keep you updated if, uh, right now, we're just talking. We don't have any verbiage out there yet as far as um, how, how we would get it done other than they're willing to pay for the, the cost of that deputy being there, so. Um, Good. Yeah. Sounds like an efficient way. Good. Joel, nothing? Anything? Um, um, Bob, just, uh, um, I know you're going to probably want to know about the property tax for budget. Um, I'm just getting back in the swing of things, uh, so I'm kind of getting caught up and my head around everything. So, um, probably nothing. I know the, the prior year number is going to be solid. It's probably going to be more than that, but to give you an estimate today would be not going to count. It's just be a big guess, and I'm not sure of that. So, but I will say that the last year's number for sure on property tax is solid, and then I will have something more for you as proceedings going forward. So. One thing I was going to talk with everyone about later on here, not right now, but about having maybe another meeting at the end of September ahead of our next finance yeah, committee. Reasonable so. number then for you guys. Yeah. Sure. Okay, that would be great. Very good. Uh, Kurt, you got anything? The only thing is, second installment due September 16th. Okay. Property taxes. Yep. Very good. Anything 
economic development <coughs> council? Excuse me, yeah, a little, a little bit. Uh, I went out to the plant three, the T and D plant that we helped finance there at the old big R building. They've got one complete production line in there. They're stamping out cabinets already. <coughs> they're uh, they build a lot of their own racks and things, and they're pretty impressive looking in there. They've got a lot of space left over. They still have to put in the paint line. And another line. There's like three lines when they make that, so they're still hauling some things back and forth to, to make them. But it's it, it's pretty impressive. I was also there during that incredibly hard rain we had on Tuesday, and in that metal building, I thought maybe we were in the hurricane, but <laughs> it was pretty nasty. I spoke to George Kuchev, who worked with us on <clears throat> the from T and D side on the revolving loan. The interest in me not screwing screwing it up. Here's what he asked him to send me a little blurb on on where they were. He said, "Plan is up and running on phase one. All phase one capital equipment has been purchased, installed, it's operational." All required building upgrades for phase one are also complete. They're currently fabricating four different styles of steel gun cabinets that are starting to go out to the market. Our first large box store, Farm and Fleet, orders were shipped in July. The next large quantity order will go out in September to Menards. We are still in what we consider the ramp up phase. We are not yet at full ship worth of volume, and there are a number of additional pieces of equipment and hiring that we have to do in further stages and as volume continues to grow. So far, they have created 11 jobs and the first production workers and supervisor have uh, received all the training on all the equipment they have so far. It's reasonably impressive looking when you're in there. They're cranking, I think they're cranking out, I think they're cranking out 30 cabinets you say 30 cabinets a minute, uh, they're stamping out parts at that rate, not, not actually cabinet parts, but, but they're uh, expecting to do something <coughs> bigger when they get fully up to, to speed. So, sounds like a good, and they made their second payment already, so we've got six grand plus back on the, on the payment plan. So, okay. it looks like a good deal. Good deal. Okay, I think that's everyone for department heads. We'll go to budget. Discussions. I'll wait for. I think we had ICPHD first, but we'll go to hear what Eric, how Eric's meeting went last night on the 911 and joint dispatch. I think everyone has some. I passed out a copy. Papers to the left and updated revisions. Um, Sherry, I don't think I got you. Just not the Okay, you've got it. Yeah, no, um, it's with the. No, I mean. Two oh, sleeping. Large numbers for different revisions. I gave you the joint dispatch revision C, um, and then ETSD. I gave you revision F. Um, I also needed to give you revision E. I apologize, I did not give you that. The difference is two hundred thousand um, dollars. E is two hundred thousand dollars for you. Um, and then I also gave you because the journal entries are completed, the uh, R and E reports for each respectively. Uh, ETSD. Met last night, we discussed at length um, the budget, trying to figure out how we're going to split the payment into joint dispatch for the PSD county and city of Watsika. Uh, we really didn't get down to a really good and solid answer. The main reason is the telecommunicators contract is up renegotiation this year, and those numbers could go about anywhere. Um, so that's where we're really kind of at. We're trying to pad it out as best we can, um, for lack of better words. Um, but if there's any suggestions as to how we can split it, we're still open for suggestions between the three, and three major entities that applies and um, fell in us to that. Um, obviously, you heard the, the Atlanta Department Head report. There was $154,000 coming to us in the form of grant money. Uh, some of that is already a refund for expenses that we've already booked out, which is good. Um, that's, I want to say, between seventy two and seventy-five thousand dollars So that will be in the ETSB coffers, uh, which will help us out going into our FY20. Uh, but with having such heavy expenses, uh, we're still going to be in the in the red running into a negative budget, uh, regardless of how much funding that we have at that point. GIS is the biggest thing that we're looking forward to um, 
for our FY21 budget at the end of the day. The main reason for that is it's required for next general as well. We have no choice in that one. We have to do it right now. The quote that we do have is about $150,000. Once we finally get to the point of putting it out for bid, since it does exceed $30,000, we'll have a more solid number to know exactly what it's going to go to cost us. Uh, to get back to the joint dispatch, right now, everybody, I've got the three main contributors at 167.5. Uh, there was a mistake that I did not catch until after the last finance committee meeting, which was the transfer to the retirement fund. Uh, right now, the it's a the employer's contribution this year is four and a half, as well as the employees. Um, next year, it is expected to go up to 5.11. So the way that this has been reading in this particular line item is it does reflect both the employee's contribution and the employer's contribution. Um, Jill and I have to talk and make sure of what's really going on, but that's what I'm seeing. And it's, at the end of the day, it's about a nine, I put a nine and a half percent value in there just to make sure that I have a good solid number built in there. It'll fluctuate, but not by much. And that number is going to be incremental depending on how much salary we actually pay. So it can fluctuate. So if for some reason I exceeded that $470,000 in salary or the telecommunicator contract gets uh, bargained at a higher rate than what I presently have in there, correspondingly the retirement fund is also going to go up. Questions? Jill, what number do you have for the transfer from the general fund in this 2020 requested in the 2020 budget, do you know? I believe it's 135. While she's looking, um, ETSD is still requesting 125 from public safety tax. I said that I would uh, reinforce that question if at all possible. Um, it would not. The way that we're currently requesting it, it was for capital expense, not for salary. If that makes any bearing on this committee, that's what our, what our intentions are versus my original submission in revisions A B, which was to put my towards the top of the year salary. Okay. And that is the same in both. Which line item does that come in? Um, Well, I, uh, it just seems like it's going to be hard to come up with that extra money when we already have big gaps on all this other stuff, but that would be my two cents, but we, we feel the same way. We've got, uh, we've got some similar challenges. We've only got so much coming in. Wheel. Does anybody have any questions or? Does it wonder what we were going to do from the beginning? Yeah. Her salary is not included. Okay. <laughs> nice try. Uh, that would be that, for effort there. But that was the bottom line <laughs> number um, when we were looking at those salary lines. Oh. Um, if, if you look, I think it says fifteen dollars and seventy six cents. Um, that was the bottom line number. I already unfortunately removed her because I caught that mistake a while Just back. Five. Yeah. Is this I tried four hundred and seventy thousand, the seven and a half percent increase what they're requesting? Or you just got any that's I don't have any requests for how much their salary is going to increase. So if you take a look at the page three in your packet, you'll have a salary uh, for joint dispatch. Uh, that's all the that's all of what the telecommunicators are going to be making at the end of FY20. If they remain with the 2.5% step increases that are already in their present contract, what's going to happen going into their contract for 20? The world may not know until that discussion is actually had, which it has not yet. Soon. <laughs> I don't have a better answer than soon either. Um, John may be able to answer a little closer into the future, but I don't think he has. We well, haven't received yet. a request from that attorney yet to, to meet. We're wanting to get the FOP done first. Maybe. Okay. Our, 
I wish, <laughs> I wish, but unfortunately, glasses have to empty on that one. They do. Uh, what that conversation is going to consist of, I don't know. I know my parts of what I want to see in there and changes. Um, I've given some of that to Dave Kevin. I'm trying to finalize a rough, a final draft for John and the rest of the bargaining committee, so they have a idea of what I would like to see, and hopefully it coincides with the majority of what they're looking for. Um, but the salaries that you see, uh, if you look at that third column, or the column just on the outside of the FY 2020, it shows you a 5.1%. That's the 2.5% uh, staff increases. So their salary is at their typical top of what they would receive at least by November 30th of 2020. There is a 18% uh, cost factor in there, and that is for overtime coverage to make sure that we're covered for overtime. Unfortunately, this year is a perfect example of why it's got to be such a high number. Uh, I have one person that's out on four weeks of FMLA, and I've had two others that have been out for two weeks each. So right now, we're already doing overtime on all of that FMLA time, which is eight weeks in total time. We're paying their normal salaries via sick time, vacation, personal. Then we can't be all the overtime. Wait. Did you ever, I know you and I had a discussion about like that PRN person, is that? That is something that's going to be discussed in the contract. Okay, I didn't know if it was completely off the table or if it was still. Okay. Okay. Somebody that's just as needed, so if he gets into a yeah, employee. Well, they would really need you part time. They would just be the trained, and, like if you're sick, we call that person. And say, uh, we have to be very careful because we do have a union ideally what the contract will probably end up having in there for language um, and this is again no guarantee we would have some language in there that in the event of overtime is available it would be offered to the full-time union employees first if in the event that all employees do not want to take it then it can be offered to a part-time and or PRM person um, same would go for any sick time sick time is really hard to do just because it is last minute right. Couple hours notice, and sometimes hard to get somebody in the door at three in the morning. Is there, I'm just you know, curious, what is our cost per person in the county? I mean, I guess we could sit here and do the math on it, but maybe I, I guess we got not that many people here in massive budget. I'm not saying it's because money's being misspent or anything like that, it's just. We spend a lot of money to have 911. And to me, and maybe I don't appreciate it, you could add color to it. Uh, what is the incremental cost per person, per citizen, to have? So if we doubled the population of the county, how much? I assume 911 costs wouldn't double as a result of that. There has to be some level of efficiency there, right? And, and I guess what I'm getting at is, is that we spend this massive amount of money and we got a county like Ford County that's small next to us and Tanky County that's right here and or whoever, I don't just throw any names out, but it seems like it would be more efficient to work together than to spend another $125,000 on next gen when quite frankly, they could probably take our calls in India, you know, I'm joking, but, but you get my, what I'm getting at. I have an appreciation. You know what I'm saying. I mean, uh, and I don't know enough. I'm just throwing, uh, just wanting to understand why not. <laughs> um, it's going into combining different PSAPs is challenging at best. Um, if, for example, let's say we went to KPP County, uh, their population right now is just a shade above 100,000. Um, to add an additional 30,000 workload. I don't know what kind of workload they're presently experiencing right now with the population that they do have. My impression and understanding is they're already busy. Um, how many employees they would need, <coughs> I would give five additional to be able to handle that because there would obviously be some workload that would be able to spread through what they have. Uh, fortunately, <coughs> they use they utilize their corrections officers for their dispatching. Uh, they have a population of approximately 15,000. Uh, they've got a larger land mass, especially with that one wonderful leg in there that might be a big challenge for them. But still, uh, 
their their cost may be offset a little bit, and I can't talk to it 100 percent. But they are corrections officers, so there's some dual effort in there that kind of offsets some of this cost where we have dedicated dispatchers, this is what they do all day, every day. Um, you are also little shining stars in there and it would be a shame to see anything that happened to them. No, I'm not, I, I'm just, I get it. The, I guess my point is we're investing all this money and we've invested a lot of money over the last however many years in equipment and all these kind of things. And to your point, if we could increase the number of heads we're serving by 50%, so Fort County's half our size, just as an idea. Like I said, I'm just going off the cuff here. You would think there's some level of efficiency for everyone involved. And if there isn't, there's something wrong, right? I mean, it, if you're not serving, if, you, if your cost per person doesn't go down as the number of people increase, then well, there's something backwards. That's why I said something like, we probably need at least an additional five if it was one book I can't do. Sure. Something. Because there would be some lead over to the other people. It wouldn't be just a dedicated set sure. of people like what we have here today. Um, it would be a challenging path to go down there. Um, you got a lot of people that are out there. They don't want some yes, no, and I guess that there's there is a lot of different things that can make and break a even a hawk for something like that. Okay. All right. Well. I guess. With your PR in person, you know, you might have met, not really met. Can they cross train and do this as a correctional officer? Is that possible or is that a bad thing? Just scratch that from my head. I guess I'll be correct. I suppose. I mean, just so you had somebody, so you weren't looking at so much overtime as yeah. well, and, you know. I. And currently, right now, I have two part-time people, um, and with the opening that I have coming up, <coughs> both of those part-time people would love that full-time job. So um, I've been doing okay right now with part-time. They used to cross-train when the when dispatch was in the jail. That's um, a dark ages. I remember that. Yeah, they used to <coughs> cross-train there. I don't know. Um, I guess it would be just the finding that person that would want to do both. And finding that person that wants, would want to do both. Um, the other thing that you're talking about it would be finding the person that can do both. There are certain individuals in the LCOs, the corrections officers and the greater than that, even with the potentially incredible dispatchers, and, and vice versa. Um, not, not everybody is good for the dispatching position. <coughs> How would the union come to play in this? How would they? I would have to say both of them have open contracts with my family. Yeah, I mean, right now with with mine, I can. Uh, it's been in there for years that if there's overtime available, right, full timers get it, then part time offers. For me, it's been especially in the summertime when our overtime hits high. Full timers don't want all the overtime, so that's why I'm getting a lot of part time units during the summer hours right now. Because uh, if it's winter, they tend to take the overtime in the summer, they, they'll refuse it. So, um, but I'm sure the I'm sure the other side of the table in negotiations would want to address that on. Okay, anything else for Eric? Thank you. Thank you. Dee, do you got any news for us? The Board of Health approved our budget on August 12th. And on August 13th, I submitted it to Bill. Um, Okay. So 
will copy to that for you right there too. So. Okay. I didn't bring up, this is, to my recollection, this is the first time ICPHD's had a budget hearing with the county board because my budget is usually for the board of health. So this is, I mean, we may have been on the agenda, but we may have been on the agenda for a hearing that I'm aware of. Well, so to be honest with you, I didn't see the agenda until this morning. <laughs> I guess we'll look at it on uh, whenever. I guess my next topic was going to be we probably need to set up a meeting for the end of September. Um, I'd say we need to do it after the 18th based on Susie's numbers not coming in until then. Is a Wednesday, so I don't know if that Thursday or Friday would work for anybody. But just have a meeting where we can. What we I just talked with Jill before the meeting. If everybody can give them their book, if they don't have it today, give her your budget book, or at the board meeting on Tuesday, give her your budget book, and she'll update it with all the latest, but whatever. After all these mountains of paper we keep getting <laughs> to give us the freshest look or whatever she did um, give us a summary of where the where the general funds at um, from a high level the kind of a top level perspective there um, and so as you can see where we sit basically after the first round of hearings last month we have a shortfall in the general fund of one hundred ninety one thousand dollars that we need to bridge. Um, and of course, that was with just taking the amounts that were presented. Just taking what they have. Okay. Yes, these are not, nobody's made any revisions or anything. The salaries are not aligned. So some people have 2%, some people have 2.5%. None of that stuff is in that number. That is kind of the final presented number from, or final requested number from okay. each of the departments. So there's some of that that what I'd like to do in the next meeting is I'm gonna sit with Jill or we, she's already sent me the file, I just need to look at it, but all the different salaries and stuff and if we put them all at X percent, what that would look like. So right. as when we come back for that next meeting, we can have that number and we can talk about that number. And, uh, and you can put together a sheet. I can put together a sheet, or Jill and I can put together a sheet that kind of shows the different options and what that costs and where that's at. Um, hope, you know, what that adjusts to that 190 number. So there's that, and then I think we just need to go through and identify where where our concerns are. Hopefully, like I said, I I wouldn't mind sitting with Jill before that meeting myself and we can identify where the big changes are maybe put together a sheet of where our big year over year changes are that are moving this number in that direction so because obviously those are probably areas we need to talk the most about uh, and maybe have some kind of summary of where those big items are where the biggest changes are biggest dollar changes are but I guess I don't know how we do this. Do we have to make a motion or something to set a date, or how? We just say that we're going to do it. Can we can we maybe wait until yeah. after the meeting next week and everybody That's can fine. look at their schedule? That's fine. So maybe on um, Tuesday, everybody, if you don't have your book today, bring back your book and look at a date. Maybe we could. I I would think this. So our finance committee is going to be October third. So I would say either this week of the 22nd here or the week of the 15th, but it would probably need to be the end of the week of the 15th, I think. So we have Susie's number and give Bob some more time on his <laughs> stuff. So maybe the beginning of the end of the week of the 15th or the week of the 22nd probably makes the most sense. Maybe earlier in the week of the 22nd. So just that way we got time to we need to have discussions with department people and stuff like that before the finance committee the following week. But. Okay. So, I 
guess we can resolve that on Tuesday, but that was kind of my thinking, unless somebody has some other idea of how to deal with all that. Does that sound okay? All right. Um, I guess that's, I don't know if anybody has any other comments on the budget. Or, well, okay, then we'll move on to claims. Should have claims in front of you, and then the sheriff brought these two. One looks like two day administrative assistant conference, $250, and two vehicle registration for a uh, Tahoe and a Traverse for $302. <laughs> Pass those around, but nobody has any questions about the claims. Um, all these charges from area wide, they're all obviously dated on the 31st. Did those all occur when you weren't in the building, or how does that work? For um, those? Some of those are invoices that we had submitted requests to have either reduced or taken off from previous months. I know I was working on it before I went on maternity leave. So um, those are actually invoices that we had discussed with area wide and, and are being paid. Some of them are from the beginning of the year. Okay, so there was no reduction or changes in them or there was? There was not. <clears throat> and the reason for that would be um, I have an email that describes all the readings out for it, and unfortunately, I still have my copy in. Yes, and some of them were sent to other departments to pay. Which, yes, Everybody okay? See everything they needed? Any other questions? If not, if someone will make a motion to approve the claims. So moved. Mr. Alt, second. Mr. Bowers, take the roll call, please. Alt, yes. Bowers, yes. Curtis, yes. Signat, yes. Young, yes. Johnson. Yes. Nick Tagger? Yes. Okay. Then do we have any old business or new business? Yes, sir. Just want to give everybody an update. I don't know if everybody is aware of it, but uh, my payroll check got jammed two payrolls ago and sent to a new account. I know John was working off his PNP. I just want to let you know that I have not seen any activity on my personal account. So it appears that, it, but I mean, for me personally, it appears it was a scam on the county rather than on um, uh, identity theft on me. So just so everybody's aware of that, and my policies need to be changed in finance for changing routing for payroll. And if you've been watching the national media, it's not just Illinois. I think it's been national now. So just let me know. Okay. We'll have more discussion on that at our IT committee. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Anyone else? All right. I have a motion to adjourn. Cool. Charlie? Ernie seconded it. All in favor? No. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't be rude yesterday. I was just on the way to